Hello, good morning. Welcome to the doctor on call at the parking lot. Um, designed basically to teach uh, medical English to people that wanted to pursue the medical career in the United States, the United States Medical Licensing Exam, or even to refresh a little bit of the knowledge. So here we are. These are frequent scenarios today in discussing endocrinology. Frequent scenarios are, for example, a patient that comes with typical features of Cushing, uh, the round face, the buffalo bumps, and the, the stria or brown color, and they ask you, what is the next step? What do you do for the next step? Usually, you have to look at this state in the evolution of the case, and this is a very simple. When they bring us a Cushing, a Cushing syndrome, we just simply ask for a dexamethasone suppression test. Now we remember the dexamethasone, uh, how much is this? This is actually a test that we provide one milligram of dexamethasone overnight, and this is supposed to uh, block the steroid path. Therefore, there should not be production of cortisol in the morning. And uh, in the morning, well, you, the next thing we do is to collect urine, 24 hours urine collection test for cortisol. And then when we collect cortisol, we see if it is elevated or it's decreased. If it is elevated or it is normal, there is no suppression. And uh, that's a normal state. If the cortisol is uh, elevated, it um, means that, the, that you have a diagnosis for the cushion. Now, the, once you have the diagnosis, now the next step is to identify what is the location. The question is, what is the test? The next test to identify the location would be a dexamethasone suppression test again. Instead of using one milligram, we use eight milligrams of dexamethasone the night before. And what this does will suppress the cortisol. If the person has a, the location of a tumor is in the um, adrenal gland, uh, in the pituitary, there will be a suppression. And then, well, it will be a benign tumor, most likely, uh, generally, so it will be resection of the tumor. Should be no problem. Happy face for everybody. Now, if the tumor um, does not suppress the cortisol, the 24 hours uh, cortisol, then the problem is either in the lungs or in the adrenal gland. So, if the problem is in the adrenal gland, then we can identify this by doing an ACTH, adrenocortical tropical hormone measurement, which should be uh, decreased if the problem is in the adrenal because of the path there is a retro negative uh, feeding. So, therefore, the increase in the cholesterol will decrease the ACTH if the problem is in the adrenal. But if the problem is not in the adrenal, it's some autonomous tumor in the lung that produces something that's similar to steroids, then there is no connection with that uh, ACTH. Therefore, the ACTH will be elevated. So in the case of adrenal suspension, if they tell us, okay, the, the patient actually had a decreased ACTH, the next step will be to do a CT scan or an MRI to identify the condition with the uh, suprarenal. If the problem is then that the ACTH is elevated, there is a, a problem in the lungs, the next step would be a chest x-ray or, or tomography or actually to identify where it is the exact tumor. So this is in general one of the cases. Another case can be related to thyroidism, hyper or hypothyroidism. For example, if they come with a case that the thyroid is diffusely enlarged, this is in general either a thyroiditis, which would be painful, or a um, Graves Basedow disease, which would be a hyperthyroidism. The clinical features is the exophthalmos that will be to identify, help us to identify the hyperthyroidism. So the patient had the hot, the flashes, all the increase in the metabolism. Uh, a lot of energy and all the activity, difficult to sleep and then at the same time they will have even diarrhea right so this is a clinical grace based disease other cases would be the diffuse nodular um, 
goiter. Now, for the goiter, we have two choices. Either it is nodule that is hot or it's a nodule that is cold. When the nodule is hot, this is generally associated with elderly people and it is 100% penning. So it's an autonomous, it's an autonomous um, nodule in this case that will be segregating the parathyroid hormone, uh, I'm sorry, the thyroid hormone, and it would not be producing, it, it would be not possible to suppress it, right? Now, on the other hand, if it is cold, it can develop into a cancer and it can develop into a one of the tumors, either a papillary cancer, which is the most common, or it can be a follicular cancer or a medullary cancer or an anaplastic cancer, right? So this is for the cold nodules. So just so this is general ideas, uh, general principles that we have to understand there. Um, general principle also is the treatment. We usually use hydration for these cases to just uh, decrease the calcium because the calcium is elevated, right? And we also use um, calcitonin. It is the hormone that decreases naturally the calcium. And we use Fosamax. We can use furosemide because that much liquids at some point can produce volume overload in an elderly patient can produce CHF and we need to produce diuresis. Okay, so general principles. So um, uh, another scenario in this case for the treatment of these thyroid conditions, we usually use we make a hypothyroidism. We use PTU, uh, propithyroacil, and then the propithyroacil becomes, uh, when the gland is uh, decreasing this level, um, then we can use the supplement for thyroid hormone. The, if they ask you what is the best screening test, the best screening test is TSH. Because if TSH is normal, that's the end of the story. We don't have to know anything else. The patient is eutyroidism, has eutyroidism, it's normal. But then if the TSH is decreased, then it's because of either a Hashimoto, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, um, it can be a thyroiditis of Hashimoto in the early state, where they are destroying these uh, follicles and putting into the circulation a lot of, of, uh, of T3 and T4, um, and then, then they press the gland. And this is in the early state. In the in the later state, the itis, the thyroiditis, um, actually consume the gland, and it is a hypothyroidism. The way uh, to diagnose this can be with the um, radi um, radio iodine absorption test. So the radioiodine, radioactive iodine can be placed in the chamber and we can detect if the person has a diffusely absorption, increased absorption, that will be a typical grace basedol hyperthyroidism. If the patient has only a, a circumscribed localized absorption, that will be multinodular goiter, which again can be hot or cold. And if the patient uh, has difficulty, not thyroidism, it can be a thyroiditis that is producing hypothyroidism. Again, the TSH is the best screening test for all of this. It's the less expensive in that sense too. Now, uh, how we also treat this, usually, for example, for Graves, uh, Bacedol, we would use beta blockers, and uh, we will use PTU, propithyroacil, to make it uh, decrease this amount of hormones. Um, any, any other elements here? I, important aspect. Well, there is something that can be, that is related, but is behind. It is, we're talking, uh, we're talking about the PT, um, the parathyroid hormone. The parathyroid hormone can be increased because a simple adenoma that is starting to produce a lot of autonomously a, a lot of PTH, paratohormone. So uh, what is the step with this? Usually we need some surgery because this is the problem with this. Um, this hormone starts to act in the bones and extract the calcium of the bone and produce hypercalcemia. 
and then the person has hypercalcemia but this actually has what is it is called a hungry bone syndrome meaning that the person is deprived from calcium and the calcium uh, and the treatment actually will be providing the calcium gluconate this is for the uh, the case of the parathyroid hormone which has a simple nodular now uh, how to handle the scenario when instead of being a simple nodule, which is the majority of the cases, let's say more than 75%, instead of only one that is hypertrophic, hyperfunctioning, we go for the four diffuse parathyroid uh, glands uh, enlarged or, or hyperfunctional. The surgery was, the surgeon will most likely remove them and place only one of them in the forearm just to uh, well it is easy to observe it and to follow it and even to resect it if it's necessary so this is the way they handle that at uh, those conditions those are the general tips that can be associated with some more of these questions for the endocrine and the endocrine uh, system that has been come to the test so i hope you find it interesting kind of uh, general vision and well uh, please come back to another blog of the doctor on call at the parking lot. Thank you very much.